I have a pet hummingbird that lives in my backyard. I decided to name him Jerry, and I figured if we were going to be friends, I should learn a little bit about him. So Jerry's species is known as an Anna's hummingbird. And one of the first things I learned about Jerry is how to tell the difference between males and females. Males have bright red heads. Females have just a little bit of red on their neck, if at all. Both clearly have an excellent sense of humor. <laughs> Having learned this, I realized we've made a big mistake. Jerry's not actually a he. <laughs> Jerry's a she. But you know what, it's fine. We'll just spell her name differently. She doesn't know the difference. Then a second hummingbird started showing up, and I thought, oh, Jerry got herself a husband. I was really excited. No, it turns out we're just really bad at sexing hummingbirds. The second hummingbird was also a female. But you know, Jerry got herself a wife. It's 2018 in Seattle. <laughs> you do you, Jerry. I'm not judging. Another thing that I learned about Jerry is that she is one of four hummingbird species that lives in the Pacific Northwest. But she's the only one that doesn't seem to have enough sense to migrate south for the winter. Part of the reason for this might be, like many of us, Jerry's not actually from here. <laughs> Surprise. In fact, prior to the 1940s, you couldn't find Jerry north of the Bay Area. Now, I don't know, maybe the hummingbird housing market got a little hot, but <laughs> for whatever reason, Jerry decides to continue migrating north. She arrives in Seattle by 1964 and has been sharing her winters with us ever since. Now, I know what you're thinking. Yet another California transplant. Like any good SoCal girl, Jerry is like not particularly well adapted to surviving our winters. Uh, full grown, she weighs about as much as a nickel, needs to eat about half of her body weight in food every day just to get by. And she can burn all of that food reserve in one night just trying to stay warm. So for Jerry and her kind during our winters, they're kind of constantly on the verge of starvation. She has a couple of different strategies to get through this. One is to enter a state of torpor, which is sort of like a short-term hibernation that allows her to conserve calories, kind of get through those cold periods. During torpor, she can reduce her body temperature from 104 degrees down to 48 degrees Fahrenheit. I know, right? And she can slow her respiration from 245 breaths per minute down to six. Now, Jerry can get by on tree sap, insects, the occasional winter garden, but during winter, her primary food source is actually us. It's the hummingbird feeders that we leave out. So how can we help keep Jerry from starving? <laughs> well, the first thing you can do is get a hummingbird feeder. The perfect recipe for a hummingbird feeder food is one part sugar to four parts water. And you don't want to do a higher concentration of sugar, as that can actually damage Jerry's kidney and liver. Um, you also want to keep it clean. And you know, mold, mildew, those will make Jerry sick. So let's avoid that. She's got a hard enough time during the winter as is. Uh, if your hummingbird feeder freezes overnight, make sure to bring it in. The morning after a really cold snap is when Jerry will need that liquid fuel more than ever. So bring it in, let it thaw, put it back out for Jerry's breakfast. It'll all be good. The second thing that we can all do to help Jerry is to plant a hummingbird garden. Jerry really likes red and yellow flowers. Those are her favorite colors. Bonus points if you plant a winter garden, flowers that'll bloom during the winter for her to eat. You'll want to try to plant flowers that bloom over different periods of time so you can provide Jerry with a longer food source over a longer period of time. Um, fuchsia, honeysuckle, jasmine, salmonberry, all of these are excellent food sources for Jerry. Jerry's favorite in my backyard right now is actually rosemary, so keep in mind they're, they're not too picky. They'll, they'll eat almost anything. So what can we learn from these awesome little magical creatures? Well, winters in Seattle can be kind of tough, as we all know. This has been a pretty tough one for me and, and some of the people close to me. So sometimes we just need to sit back and appreciate the magic of the season, even if the magic of the season comes in the form of a tiny avian helicopter that doesn't quite have enough sense to fly south to warmer weather. Maybe she doesn't have the Alaska Airlines card, I don't know. Another thing is that Jerry can teach us to remember to care for others, and that even those that aren't from here can find their niche with just a little bit of help. So I want everyone here to go home and start running their own hummingbird food bank. It's really easy to set up. The maintenance is very low. And if you're interested, I'm happy to help you get started. Come see me during intermission. I have about 10 hummingbird feeders that I am willing to part with so that you can all run your own hummingbird food bank. Thank you.